Yo, welcome to the Sports Life Talk Experience. This is your new favorite show. I am the mouth of the South, B. Jones. And I am the head coach, KT. And we want to welcome you to the Sports Life Talk family. Hey, that's right. Family. We don't do fans. We, we don't do followers. We only do family members around here. So do your play cousins a favor and like this video. Hey, and don't forget to smash that subscribe button because your support will go a long way to help this channel. Hey, have fun and enjoy the show. Hey, I'm Coach Ariel Breaker, and I got next. You next up, and you ain't been on sports like talk. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> hey, you better hit him up. Look, you breaking next, and you up next. Keep the coins go hard. Rise the star on the big scene, make them know who you are. You don't break a sweat, don't settle for less. They put you through that test. Your resume that flesh. Who got next? Who got next? SLT, ready say go. Who got next? Who got next? Living my dreams and all your goals. Who got next? Who got next? You can ask B. Jones or head coach. Who got next? Who got next? You next up, so here's my vote. Ch SLT Nation, welcome back to another fire episode of Sports Life Talks. You got next, a platform that gives exposure to the voices of tomorrow. We are talking to rising stars in our communities who are doing big things and living out what, KT? Big dreams. Big dreams. And today, we about to break y'all off something. That's right. We taking it to another level as we got assistant coach at West Virginia, former Notre Dame alumni. We got the team captain in the building, KT. Hey, welcome to the show, Ariel Breaker. How you doing, Ariel? I'm good. I'm good. How are y'all doing? Hey, I'm doing good. Now. We got you on the show, so how can we got to be good? <laughs> hey, KT. Pump yes. your brakes. All right, look. <laughs> I've, been work for that. I've, been working, I've been working on that one for two weeks, ladies and gentlemen. I had to throw it in there. All right, check this out. If you've checked us out before, you, you, you're back checking us out again. We want to thank you. Welcome back. Welcome home. We hope you enjoy the, the Sports Life Talk experience. But if you are new to our channel, allow me to introduce myself. I am your host, the mouth of the South B. Jones, a true Louisiana, Mr. Yeet in the building. And I'm rocking alongside my brother from another mother, the head coach, the architect, the guru, the KT. How you doing, Kev? Man, BJ, I'm doing great. I can't wait to beat the brakes off you later. Ah. Um, but now, nah, man, I'm doing good, man. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good, man. Well, let's rock and roll. Hey, listen, before we get into Ariel's amazing story, we got to pay the bills. If this is your first time checking out the channel one more again, I want to say thank you. We will appreciate you so much. We know there's a million other podcast streaming channels, but you chose to rock with us. So we're going to give you a good time, but we got to pay the bills and we need you to do us a small favor. In Sports Life Talk Tradition, I'm going to count out three and I'm going to say it loud. I'm going to be boisterous with it. And I need you to, when we finish, to smash that subscribe button become a part of our family because kt and i we don't do fans we don't do followers we do family members and this show and this platform is all about family you hear me so uh smash that subscribe button and then if you're feeling real froggy go ahead and smash that like button too you know what i'm saying two clicks and it goes a long way to helping out our channel all right here we ariel are y'all are they ready oh yeah i mean we we rocking I mean, what's going on? You got that, that million dollar smile down there. I know. I don't know. I, I'm, all, I'm just I'm ready for the heat to come. You know what I'm saying? All right, here we go. Oh, man. One, two, three. Boom. Somebody drop one of Clues bombs. Hey, if you smash that subscribe button, welcome to the Sports Life Talk family. We got over 300 episodes. This is season three of You Got Next. It's been a blessing, and we're going to keep giving y'all some more heat like today. All right, without further ado, I was about to sing Ariel off of The Little Mermaid, but I was, to, I, was, I was about to go, uh. I'm not much of a singer, or else I would have joined in. But I think I ain't gonna do it though. Subscribe. I've been working on I've been working on this stuff, and I didn't have the courage to pull it off. All right, but here we go. Ariel Breaker, welcome to the Sports Life Talk Initiation. Thank you, thank you. I'm happy to be here. Thank you guys for having me on. 
All right, no problem, Coach. To initiate you into the SLT family, you got to give us your top five music artists. All right. So, I mean, right now I've been on the SZA kick, uh, SOS, new album. I listen to it every day. I'm going to go Kalani because, um, again, I'm like more of the slow vibes, LMA, The Weeknd, and her. It's probably the top five artists on my I, you right know now. what though? I, I don't know why I got a feeling that uh I don't know. We're gonna talk about that. And Coach, you, you 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 in a relationship or been in a relationship lately? Cause that list, that playlist, <laughs> that playlist no. is something, you know what I'm I saying? I know, it's crazy. I, I haven't been in a relationship in like seven years. I don't oh. know. No nothing. I'm just chilling, working. Okay. okay. That that sizzle, then she hit him with the Kalani and uh hey the her <laughs> <laughs> now I'm, not, I'm like, hey, them, them, them young ladies can go though. Exactly. All right, B Jones. So anybody that's watching this show, you're new to the show. We we rank the top five. So the the highest you can get is five. But 2023, I've been really generous. And B Jones, walk, I mean, why well, stop now? She got what over seven years of coaching experience. Yeah, give us seven. Now, Coach, with that said, we've given out all of our money, so if you want to kick a little something back to us, feel free to do so. All right, so who, who is your favorite superhero and why? Um, I'm going to have to go with Shuri. Um, strong, independent, black woman. Oh, and yeah. And it, yep, you already know. And, you know, just the way she's able to lead with wit and intelligence, um, I try to do that. I'm very much of a dry humor person, so I love it. She's she scared me in this last one though. When I saw Michael B. Jordan, I said, "Oh Lord, what we get?" I, 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 I oh, oh, spoiler alert, Kevin, you got to put a spoiler oh. alert on this one. Yeah, yeah you I'm know, sorry. I ain't seen it yet, B. Jones. I'm still waiting oh, to come out. Oh my bad. All right, my bad. But I already knew you can't. I mean, right. if, you, if you look at the internet and on social media, you know he was on there. But thank you anyway, B. Jones. <laughs> All right. So since every good superhero needs their own theme music, what would your theme song be? <laughs> So, um, Walk by Day J Dash uh, was our song in college. Uh, so, that would definitely be my walkout song. I would probably ask them to skip to the second verse so I can do my little uh, dance with it. But sing for sure. you for us, coach. Sing, sing, walk. I, I ain't never heard that one, I don't think. Uh, I get a little bit of money. I pay my bills. <laughs> I you pay heard? that cover. Now, let's see, walk, walk. Wop, wop, wop. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's wop. the one they do on on, on the TikTok videos. <laughs> yeah, well they took it over, but like that was cool back in 2012. So I don't oh, know. Oh, okay, so, I got you. All yeah, right, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with that song from the TikTok videos, but yeah, that's dope. All right, all right, cool. All right, so if you can shadow anyone for a week and learn from them, they could be either dead or alive. Who would it be and why? Uh, I mean. Honestly, this is going to sound a little bit cliche, but my mom, because I, I, she's probably one of the smartest people that I've ever met, but I don't truly know exactly what she does. I just know that any job she's had, she's very high up. Um, so I'm like, dang, how do you like, how are you getting money like this? Like, how do I, how do I get like you? So definitely hers. Um, again, it feels like I should be able to do that. But when we're home, we're home for like two days and I'm like, okay, hi and bye. Um, so just really study her and kind of figure out her leadership ways and things like that. That's what I, would I like that one, KT. One. You can never go wrong with mama. <laughs> All right. So you hit that subscribe button or thinking about doing so, please do leave us your top five, your theme song and your favorite superhero in the comments. On behalf of the SOT Nation, I want to welcome Coach Breaker to our family. So B Jones, go ahead and take it away, brother. All right, man. We about to break y'all off something. Uh, <laughs> I'ma break you off something. All right, here we go. go. Coach Breaker. All right, so let's take this thing back to Gross Point, Michigan. I'm gonna get my buffs on here in a second. You know what I'm saying? So I could be like the Detroit finest. But uh now, now, now Gross Point, it, it finally hit me behind you know stage that that's where the movie is. Now when you were were you old enough to recognize that they had a movie like about Gross Point and all that stuff when you were coming up? Or was that a big deal out there? <laughs> so we knew of Gross Point blank, but there's been a lot of other movies shot in Gross Point that like are more important. So when I found out about Gross Point blank, I watched the whole movie and there's only like 13, 15 seconds of 
our actual city in that movie. So it's kind of disappointing, but... <laughs> What what other movies was filmed out of Gross Point? It's more important than Gross Point Black. I love Gross Point Black growing up. <laughs> yeah, there's there. some like scenes from like Transformers, I believe. There's oh, okay, some okay. Mark Wahlberg movies. Um, LOL with Demi Moore and Miley Cyrus. It was a okay. big thing. Miley stayed in a house in Gross Point, and everyone would drive by at blasting party in the USA. Um, <laughs> that was like when I was in high school, I think. So. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, let's take this thing back to your days growing up. I mean, when, when did when did you when did you start hooping? When did you fall in love with the game? And tell us a little bit about coming up in Gross Point. Yeah, for sure. So I actually started playing basketball when I was like five or six, but we moved around a lot. So Gross Point is kind of what I consider my home base now. But I lived there from eighth grade through high school. Um, I. I think I knew, I fell in love with basketball. I was living in um, Biloxi, like Bay St. Louis area, Mississippi, and I was playing in a league and they didn't, obviously not a lot of girls played back then. I, I went to a private school. So the league was second through fourth graders and I was in second grade and there were only three teams. So, you know, each week, you, every other week you saw the same team. and. I was on the blue team, I forget our name. There was a green team that wasn't very good, but then there was a red team and they were called the Red Hots. And they were the ones that always won. And there's some girls from my school that were on the team, but we beat them a few times. We had a banquet at the end of the year and uh, I got MVP. And so I like walked up to my mom and I was kind of pissed. I was like, why, like, why didn't I get defensive player of the year? Why did this girl get defensive <laughs> player of the year? Like, she's not a great defender. And my mom's like, no, like MVP means you do everything. Like you did everything well. I was like, well, I wanted the defensive player of the year. So I'm just like confused. And she was like, okay, whatever. You're going to be good because you obviously have no idea what this means. And then just kind of from there, I grew up in playing basketball in Indiana, which I really, um, there's a high level of basketball there. I was taking charges in the fourth and fifth grade. You know, you don't really see that now. Oh, you <laughs> yeah. Tough. Yeah, yeah, I was taking charge. I don't know what it was. I remember there was a game. It was when I was in sixth grade. Um, again, where I was playing up. So I was playing in seventh and eighth graders. And this girl in a fast break, I sprinted down, beat her, took a charge. Same thing. Sprinted down, beat her, took another charge. Third one, I wanted to block her shot, got a foul. And my mom's like, see what happens when you don't just like stay on your feet. So <laughs> <laughs> um, kind of from that point there, when we moved to Gross Point, um, I played in eighth grade, obviously, for a COIO team. We were okay. And then I was lucky enough, the high school I went to, we won a, or we won a state championship my sophomore year, uh, which was pretty exciting and uh, had not ever been done in women's basketball before. All right. So so, you, so w when did you recognize, like, so all of these things happen and you kind of like, hey, I'm, I'm actually pretty special with this thing because you didn't just go to any school. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You went to one of the baddest college programs in the nation. So you had to be you had to be kind of special, Ariel. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm blessed. I am super blessed. Um, you know, my I always joke with my girls now. I'm like, my parents put in a lot of money into my shot so I could shoot the basketball. Like, you know, I was an athlete. I think most coaches, even now, Coach P, um, she recruited me in high school when she was at an assistant coach at the University of Michigan. And she was like, you were just like an athlete that could change a program. Like your skill wasn't all the way there, but you had other intangibles that were pretty special. And then obviously, um, you know, going to Notre Dame, I went in with a really, really good class. And obviously Skylar Diggins was there. Um, one of the top female players in the country, hands down. But no argument. Yeah, you played with Skylar? Yeah, for three years. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, y'all was monsters back then. God, yeah, dog. So, and then you got, you know, Kayla McBride, who was my age, Natalie Achanwa, who was my class. So Natalie Achanwa? Oh yes. my goodness! Yes, the WNBA is right now. Exactly. Jewel Lloyd came in a few years later, um, so we were stacked. Like you know, in that, and that's the good part too, just of how I was as a player. I don't, I wouldn't say I was ever a player that was going to dominate dominate a game offensively. That's just not what I do. Um, I can defend. I can defend anyone on the court. I'll tell you that. I'm confident in that. But. 
being able to go to a school and play with those players who are able to do that and like I'm able to get them the ball and things like that like it was awesome it was an incredible experience so well, well hold on so for so that team captain just went I mean that ele- elevated through the roof to me I mean because for you to be given team captain status and that much talent around you I mean that's that says a lot about you Ariel I'm, I'm being for real I mean that you, you you were viewed highly I guess that that defensive mentality now did you know when you chose to go to Notre Dame did you know like hey Natalie and all of these other five star <laughs> kids were, go- were coming to campus with you so ironically K-Mac and I played against each other in um high school like AAU basketball I think it was maybe our sophomore year but I guess I really didn't know Kayla that well Natalie and I I think our official visit weekend was the same weekend um so we met before then but kind of it's funny how it works now because when we got into college Kayla and I are very similar on like things that we like and how like not exactly how we do things because I'm a little more wild than she is she's a little more reserved but um just random things like from Burger King, we know that we're going to get the, for breakfast, the croissant sandwich with no egg, sausage and cheese only. Like, specific weird things like that. So I didn't really know. I knew that I played against her. I didn't know what kind of quality, you know, players they were going to be. But then I figured out a little bit my freshman summer, I was there by myself because K-Mac was off playing USA basketball and Natalie was off playing Canadian basketball. And I was like, Okay, like these are some really good players that are coming in. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 That's pretty dope. Well, well, we I hate we got to talk about. I mean, we could probably just spend a ton of time talking about Notre Dame basketball, but, but we got to tell your amazing story because not only did you play for a prestigious co- collegiate program, but you took this thing to the next level. When did you decide to become a coach, Ariel? When, when did you make that decision to, to say, "Hey, I'm putting the ball down, but I'm gonna pass it to somebody, and I'm gonna help help groom these young ladies." Um, I think I didn't really know until summer after I graduated. My mom was like, I signed you up to be a GA at the D2 school down the street. So your like, mama is a boss. She called a <laughs> shot. She like, hey. So when you say, when you say hey, I think her, her mama yes. might be Lord Voldemort or somebody. We can't be saying her name. Lord have mercy. Her mama just say, hey, you, 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 hey, I signed you up for a GA. Yeah, so she was th- like, you're going to be a GA. You're going to get your master's and figure out what you want to do. And so... <laughs> It was like, if you really want to be in coaching, you need to take this seriously and do all that. So I was a GA at Wayne State in Detroit. Um, it was a little awkward because there are people, I was coaching someone that I'm friends with and played against in high school. So that was a little awkward. But the overall experience and how it made me felt was really good. But I think the real telltale sign of I was like, no, I'm going to be in this industry was when I coach juco for a year at western texas college um it was in the middle of nowhere i took a big risk obviously and it's not really it's not about the money obviously you need experience anywhere you go and that's kind of what my mom was telling me she's like don't worry about the money and all this like you need experience you need to grow you need to look at all these levels and make sure this is what you want to do and I went down there and it helped me become a better teacher. Like, I think when you get into this industry, especially playing at the level I'm at, you just assume that everyone knows everyone's level of knowledge of basketball is at the same of yours. And so I remember I was like telling the girls to do something and three of the kids went through and they just didn't do it. And they're not the type of kids that just not listen. And I was like, do you know what that is? All of them? No. Okay, that I was like, that's on me. That's my fault. You know, I got to teach you th- these things before I just tell you to do it. So after I did that, I loved it. Um, I got a call from Coach McGraw, actually, and she said there was an opening at Lehigh. And she was like, you know, you paid your dues. Like, I didn't know how serious you were about this until you went to that JUCO down in Texas. And she was like, and they called and asked me if I had any recommendations, and I'm recommending you. And that was huge. So Wow. Yeah. So now, so so, what is your coaching philosophy? Let's talk about that. We running. I'm running short on time because I got a couple more things I want to talk about. But talk to us a little bit about your coaching philosophy. Like if if I, if I'm sitting down in in the room or on the court with 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 Ariel Breaker, what what what? How, how are you training? How are you coaching? What are you motivating? Like what what are you about? Because it sounds like you're gonna be talking about defense first. Uh, yeah, always. Um, always. In, intangibles, effort, defense. Um, 
I like the way Coach P does a lot of things. I think, you know, as I grow in this industry, I'll take a lot of that with her, but uh, she's been on finishing plays. And I never really thought about it that way because finishing plays kind of seems vague, but you can do it like, okay, if you can get an extra tip on the basketball to your teammate to finish the play and get the rebound. You can dive on the floor when the ball gets on the floor to get an extra possession. Even if it's a jump ball and it goes the other team's way, it's your way next time. So I'm big on that. And I think just um, understanding of the game. So even though I wasn't a great offensive player, I think I understood the game at a high level and I knew my limitations and what I could and couldn't do. And there's things that I wish I would have done back then, obviously, in college to prepare better. But I think now that I have done, now that I, I know what I didn't know back then, I'm going to teach these kids that now. And then above all, it's about, you know, growing into a leader and being confident outside of basketball. So after you're done playing the sport, because you're not going to play it forever. What does that yeah. look like for you? Are you right. confident? Are you a good person? Like, <laughs> are you able to stand up for yourself and things like that or advocate for yourself? And so I hope that I'm giving these kids confidence, you know, as they come through the program for four years uh, to be out on the real world and, you know, to dominate and do what they want to do. Well, I'm so I, listen, we, we started this with the mission of, of helping grow the women's game. And we, we really took over that mantle. And to hear you say that, I hope this show goes viral because <laughs> everybody ain't going to put up 30 points, y'all. No. It, it's, it's so many ways you can make an impact. And guess what? It, you were successful just going down, taking charges and, and you were the team captain. People looked at you as a leader. <laughs> you, I mean, to me, that that story is uh, that's an unsung hero, in my opinion. Cause <laughs> everybody loves the person that's going to 30 points. But but man, what about the, the the grinding out? What about the the, the jumping on the floor? The the taking. I mean, that, that to me, that's so that's so powerful. But last question: You built a little name for yourself, and it's not it's not for coaching. It's not for it's not for for, for playing basketball. It's for style and fashion. Oh. So t t hey, now you got you got a big matchup coming up here so pretty soon. But yeah. what, what, why is it important to you? to be flawless on that <laughs> sideline, to, 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 to just come out, you out there, and to bring that drip on the sidelines. Why is that important to you, Ariel? Because I feel like look good, play good. My girls are like, they're feeling confident. I'm feeling confident. I'm trying to, you know, push. Since I can't be out on the court doing those things, I'm trying to exude that from the sideline, hopefully, from them. And, you know, obviously, Sid Carter is going to be a tough matchup for me, but you, we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> so that's so everybody else gonna be watching the box sheets. Me and Kevin are gonna be looking like okay, the way she got her jacket on, and that's uh, you know the color pattern. Kevin, will be like, I don't like that scheme that Sydney wearing. You know, I'm giving this one to Coach Break. <laughs> I know we're gonna have to get a picture or something before or after the game. Be like, yeah, you, know, we're, you gotta give me my props somewhere. Coach, you know where it come down to though, right? It's gonna come down to the shoes. It is. So what? Give us a. Can, can we get any insight? Are we wearing heels? Are we wearing sneakers? Oh, oh, I'm definitely gonna wear heels. Oh, um, yeah. okay. Just okay. Depends. I mean, I buy probably. I probably average buying at least one to two pairs of shoes a week. So I could yeah. say, yeah, it's absolutely insane. Um, it's it's West bad. <laughs> It's, West Virginia about to give you a raise, ain't it? <laughs> we're going to need to, because honestly, yeah, I was I'm going recruiting uh, tomorrow, and I was like, all right, I gotta look up every you know DSW Nordstrom Macy's, like, what store am I hitting for some fire pair of shoes? So oh, we'll like, see what happens. Like it's too, it's like too late to order them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, good luck in that in that important matchup of the century. That's right. you're kicking the heat off with some, with some major heat, but uh, I got an important matchup right now. And coach, I'm gonna need your help. Welcome to the championship rounds. This is the part of the show where Kevin and I we go one v one, and you are now officially calling all the shots. Have you ever played a game called Would You Rather before, Coach? I have. All right, so the rules are very simple. Both Kevin and I will pitch a scenario. You select one of those from that scenario, and whichever one you select, that host will gain a point. The first host to get two points or the best out of three will win this episode's game. And if we take it to round three, which I don't know how we always do, we will have a tiebreaker, which Kevin, we call it the drop, which Kevin will uh, will, will, will coach you through it. He'll tee it up for us when the time comes. All right, Coach? Well, All right, sounds good. Ke Kevin is the defending champion. Um. He got he got a clean win. I'm not I'm not going to dispute this win. He got a clean win in the last one. Clean upset. Win. Two. Yeah, 
No, they're not all clean. They're not all clean. You, I, said you, said you, you about two. I said about two was kind of sketchy, but everything yeah, else. Yeah, you do a lot of begging like he sweat. I'm pretty sure you're going to start that begging now. But uh, no, why would I have to beg? I'm the defending champion. But I will say this, since you threw it out there. Oh, you, no. Do you know who reached out to you, Coach? Who? Oh, oh. It don't matter. Well, you said I'm begging. I got to keep that. Well, I'm, a, I'm, about, I'm about to be Ursula right now on you, cuz. Let's go. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> okay. Well, I didn't see that coming. Make your voice. <laughs> Please don't do that. All right, coach. Would you rather coach a player that makes it to the WNBA, gets drafted number one, and then their Hall of Fame speech credits you for their success, or. Or would you rather coach a player that becomes a coach, wins rings, and say they did it through the aerial breaker blueprint? So it's basically like you you start this this coaching tree of success that has a ripple effect. Huh. That's crazy. I'm going to have to probably go with the coaching one because then, I don't know, I feel like they're spreading my knowledge and what I've taught them on to other people as well. And that's then the, a, I have a blueprint. Like that's crazy. Am I Jay Z? Like that's what Yes, that's exactly what I was going for when I when I created that. That is right. That is correct. All right, round number two. Would you rather host an aerial breaker YouTube basketball pickup series where you get to go play against top players in the country, uh, professionals and non-professionals, while playing them in gyms and teaching the game of basketball, or Host your own food show where you interview athletes and celebrities as they take you to their favorite places to eat in their hometowns. Oh, man, I'm food, hands down, because I can't play anymore. Uh, I'm a big foodie. <laughs> anyway, like, honestly, there's not a lot of food I will say no to. That's what everyone used to joke about whenever they're like, Mikey will eat it. I will eat it, everything. So yeah, I was for sure you weren't going to be a food person when you said you don't eat eggs. I was like, hey, shit, I, I knew right then I had it. You said I, I eat eggs. eggs. You said you you get a croissant with no eggs. Oh, well, not the Burger King egg. <laughs> if I make eggs. That's a fake egg. Yeah. <laughs> no offense, Burger King, but no. No, no offense, Burger King. We still want that. We still want that, that sponsorship, yes. Burger King. That was wrong. Did. See, see how he did you, Coach? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Let's go. Round number three. He's just rude. So for round number uh, three, since it's tied, we have a segment on our live show, which you can watch Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Central, right here on our YouTube channel. Come check us out. There's two other hosts. It's a great time. We'll talk about it later. But we talk about shoes in our drop. So for round three, B. Jones will present a shoe. I will present a shoe. Whichever one you pick, the host wins. All right. I'm host, ready. Can you give us a countdown? I'll give you. All right. Three, two, one. Oh. The 11s are clean. These, these 11s are hard. Yes, these they are. are. I give it to you. These <laughs> are brand new the 11s. <laughs> oh! For the win, uh, and guess who is back? The belt, and new, belt is out. <laughs> and new sports life talk. You got next champion of the world. M O T S. Yes, Kevin. Take them little lows somewhere else, man. I'm I know I should grab these other ones I had right here. I probably stood a better chance, but I said, you know, I had just one with these. Let me keep, uh, well, keep what, it rolling. Did I see the other pair? I already know. He finna bring out them wild cherries. No, no, not the wild cherry. Oh, okay. The fusions. Oh. Uh, no, nah, them 11s. I said we're going to lose. Yeah. Who, who, would he have won with the, with the fusions? No. no. I'm a yeah. dunk lows girl. Can you give me some pop popcorn? Out. <laughs> He's trying to show out, man. Golly. All right. All right. Well, let's go. Let's go. All right, Coach uh, Coach Breaker. The title of the show is You Got Next. Everybody following you at Earl 44 Ariel. We, we might have to ask you about that one. I got I gotta I might have to put some put some understand that name, but uh, tell us real quickly what what does the future hold for you now that we all locked in, which we know you can't stand assistant coach forever, not with that intelligence yeah. and attitude you got, but uh, uh, what's the end game here? What can we look forward to? 
Um, in game, I would love to be an AD somewhere. Uh, so I don't know what that looks like yet. I do love coaching. I think it'll be hard for me to step away. But again, um, my impact, I wanted to impact all athletes, um, not just, you know, women's basketball as well, especially in the women's sports in general. So eventually right. one day. <laughs> all right. Quick, quickly tell us what Earl, Earl, Earl 44 oh, Ariel means. So er Earl is my nickname. That's what literally everyone calls me. Um, if you say Ariel really fast, it sounds that's like right. Earl. Yeah. If from, <laughs> or if you're from Louisiana, that's, that's just how we talk. <laughs> Earl, Earl. Yeah. <laughs> so Earl, and then I think 44 was already taken. So I put Ariel at the back of it. Ah, oh, I got gotcha. you. Okay. <laughs> is that, that 44 is the number you wore in college? Mm -hmm. That was my number all through high school and college. All right, coach, you got any shouts you want to give? Um, shout out obviously to my mom. Uh, hopefully she watches this and hopefully my aunt Rachel as well. Um, all my friends, all of my siblings, they're, they're going to say they're going to listen to it, but they're not. Love you guys anyways. Um, yeah. No, no. To make sure your mom tells them to do it because she seems to get stuff. I was about to say, just tell your mom to call Mark Cuban for us too because she calls shots. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so... <laughs> All right, Coach, so this is the part of the show where you get a chance to call the person that you think should have next. Tell them, hey, I got a chance to rock with B. Jones and KT. I told them my story. I want you to do the same thing. With that said, Coach, who are you giving your game ball to? <sighs> I'm going to have to give it to TP, Teresa Plassance. Go ahead. I mean, it's your time to shine. Hey, Teresa, I saw you in, in, in the fantasy league and everything. So we, it'll be a privilege to get you get you on the show. Uh, Teresa, you got next. But Coach Ariel Breaker, you are amazing. You are the true team captain. I love your energy. I love your mentality. Hey, I love your style, your fashion. You're going to break them off something proper like here in the future is bright because Ariel Breaker, you got next. Sports Life Talk Nation. Man, oh man. I, I, I'm telling y'all, these things just keep coming and they're going to keep on coming because you rocking with us. We need your support. Skylar, please come back to Dallas if you're watching this. All right. We, I, you, you <laughs> you, you, you and Enrique will be killer on the same team again. We can move Enrique to the two. But uh, but listen, y'all keep rocking with us, please. Uh, we got so much heat coming y'all way. 2023, the takeover has already began. Hey, the shows ain't going to stop. We're going to keep working hard. Don't forget, like Kevin plugged earlier today, come rock with us at 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, stream live on YouTube. It is a live stream, so it's unfiltered. You don't know what you're going to get, but it's not just about sports. It's about sports. Sports, it's about life and it's about the conversation and we create the conversation so uh come be a part of that and uh what, what am i missing oh yeah don't forget to subscribe smash the subscribe button this is your second altar call you hear me smash the subscribe button smash the like button and please hit the share button so everybody can see ariel's million dollar smile man the world needs that you know what i'm saying everybody needs yeah. that so please do that part but kt you, you you look a little i don't know disgruntled <laughs> since the championship oh. rounds but uh i don't know i'm gonna let you i'm gonna let you close it out man you you want to say something no i'm joking i'm a little disappointed in coach i told y'all like ursula yeah uh, you, did. <laughs> you, you did say that you know no you didn't take my boy <laughs> even when i lose b jones i win because we have a new family member and coach that's right breaker whatever you need from us please let us know because after this show I'm going to ask you for a couple of favors so thank you so much for rocking with me <laughs> thank you guys for having me I enjoyed this a lot thank hey. you hey alright Ariel you got to show them the dance let me see you walk 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 yeah Swans Like Talk Nation we love y'all stay safe be blessed respect each other and love one another because <laughs> together we are better and keep dreaming big because you never know your story may be the next one featured on Sports Life Talks you got it Next. Yeet. See what's crazy is I knew you had next because you always working, you always grinding, you're in your bag because you're always working. Like in due time, I just I knew you got next. Oh, you did it, huh? Crack the code. You got next, so you smashing goals. You want next, you need exposure. Well, sports like talk out the baddest show, like the baddest hut in the room. Podcast to tune into just for you to talk your shit. Talking mushroom, you are what you eat and you should consume. Sports like talk from the late night to the afternoon, then rest repeat. Hit the like, leave a comment, or subscribe so you don't miss a beat. You got next, just a small taste of a winning meal from a chef type of celebrity. What's up next is you, at least you better be. Yeah, you got next, yeah. I can feel it. Talking.
finish